Good. Okay. Well, good. Thank you, Steve. Thanks for the introduction. We felt that uh, would be good to give you some background information. We had very successful uh, three-day Webby class that we just recently completed. Uh, some of you are actually in attendance at the webinar today, and I appreciate you coming out uh, and uh, taking this all in. These are always a lot of fun for me to do. I I really love this product. I've worked with it over 24, 25 years. I believe in it. It's you know look at the number of people signed up for these webinars recently in the four to five hundred range. The interest and demand is still there. We coexist with other products like Tableau and Power BI, but we have our niche as well for the reporting side. What I'm here to do today um, uh, is basically a presentation that was probably the most requested topic from the first two webinars that we did. We came to you and said, hey, we were doing the um, um, managing your merging or advanced formatting and said, what would you like to see? We had a variety of different topics that we're going to try to incorporate over time. And uh, this one came up as a high priority item, so we decided to schedule it. Uh, in fact, just as a side note, we'll be doing the next one. We'll announce dates on it soon on what's new in 4.2. I'll give you some real inside scoop on 4.2 from Service Pack 3 through 8. That was another highly requested one. Well, that'll be our next one uh, as well. And again, these are springboards to get you to want to get into training, where it's very comprehensive with a lot of different examples. And I'll remind you, this is the handout from this that I have is one of 30 or 35 that come out in our best practice uh, handout that we give to all the students from all of our training classes as well. But let, today we're here to talk about using Excel files in Webby. You use Excel files in Power BI and in, in, in Tableau, and we've always used Excel files in Webby as, a, as to provide another data source is typically what it is. The introduction of, of direct access to an Excel file first came out version 4.1. They surprised us. They sprung it on us, along with the group button and the and values button for formulas and variables and so on. But it was a neat feature to be incorporated in, providing you use it properly. Very straightforward, very nice set of rules to follow to make sure that you can bring Excel in. The people ask me, why would I need Excel? Because not all of your data is sitting in a database under, under the covers. You're a financial planner and you've got actual data coming from Oracle, DB2, SQL Server, Teradata. It doesn't matter. But then you need to bring in planning data. Well, wait a minute, you're capturing history, not future. Well, I can bring in one, two, three, four, five, as many Excel files as I want, and I can bring those into the mix and mix them in with my universes and pull all my queries together and go through the merging process and voila, there's my data, but I'm taking advantage of it. So let's get into Webby and let's talk about Excel files. Um, I get more questions on Excel file access than any other topic in Webby. It's amazing. And the reason is, first of all, people want to learn how to bring an Excel file in. All right, it's a little different than what you would think. You don't just directly access it. If you're an old time user back in three and version two, when we had what's called rich client, you more directly access things, but we're not doing that here. We're in pure webby. And I might add a couple little notes here while we go along. Uh, we're in 4.2, some recommendations. Make sure your preference settings for modify is set to uh, HTML, that it did get set, so you're running the HTML version. That means you can use whatever browser you want, and we can basically give Java the old boot. Uh, Microsoft Edge does not currently support the environment, but it is in 4.3, which I've been running 4.3 for a while, testing it as well, and it does work there as well. All right, so let's talk about Excel. In order to bring in an Excel file, you have to create it outside of Webby. If you notice, I'm in the BI Launchpad. I logged in. Most of you don't see a login screen because of single logon, the pass-through security type setup. But uh, I'm sitting in the BI Launchpad. It tells me right up here. And there's your classic Home and Documents button. I'm on the Home tab currently. This is where you would launch Webby to create a new document, which we'll do later. There's also a Documents tab for managing documents that we've already got out there. Okay. And let's talk for a second. Here's an example showing you my documents with a subfolder called My Favorites. Down on the bottom, there's the, the classic folders that should have been called Public Folders, and they did not rename it. But when you open it up, it does call it Public Folders. And this is an important feature that we have to talk about when we specifically get into an Excel file, and we'll talk more about it in a couple minutes as well. So in order to have Excel as a data provider, it's created completely outside of Webby. You go to your standard Excel, you create the Excel file, multiple columns, make it look like data silos, where the first row contains column heading or heading names, and then there's nothing but data underneath it all the way across. So uh, that makes the data nice and clean for you. Uh, you don't have a data interpreter feature like Tableau does. It allows you to clean it up and break two different two different types of blocks out separate. So you have to manage it yourself. And just make sure your Excel file is nothing more than title, data, title, data, 
title data left to right all the way across. Doesn't matter if there's 200, 500, 700 rows, um, doesn't matter how many columns. You can build some pretty large scale Excel files and bring those in as well. You create the Excel file outside of Webby and you bring it in. You also update Excel files outside of Webby and you bring it in, but you don't bring it in the same way. And that's where a lot of you run into problems. You, you use the old import that I'll show you in a couple of minutes to import an Excel file. It changes. So you go back out and you re-import it again and you permanently break the report. How many times I've heard that from customers where they actually broke the report, they didn't have it backed up, trying to update it and they didn't do it correctly and it gotten saved along the way. So what you gotta do is bring the Excel file in. So obviously it's created outside. Uh, on my C drive on this machine, I have a folder out there. I'll open it up real quick on my drive here for, and I called it uh, uh, Excel holder and I kind of put all my Excel files in one place. This is one of many best practice pointers that I like to give out in my classes. I always feature it by saying, put a BP in your book and make a comment there. It's nice to have your Excel files where you're reading them from in one place and not scattered all over the place. You're gonna be doing maintenance on them. You could have it out there multiple times in different places with the same name. You have to manage your Excel files correctly so you don't run into problems matching it up incorrectly. So I made it very easy. I just created a, an old BO a folder out there that I called Excel holder. If you were to open it up, I'll open it up here real quick. We'll get back into Webby in a minute. And I have efashion.xlsx, which happens to be the Excel file we're going to use. Some things that I've learned over time across the service pack levels, and I go back a long time in, in Webby, but just talk 4.2 only. Um, the best type of Excel or file you're gonna wanna have is an XLSX. It supports both, but a regular XLS file, I have run into problems when I've done updates before on a sporadic basis or it throws a format error and it gets out, gets out of tune for some reason, who knows why. So XLSX files, they seem to be clean. I've never had an issue with those at all. So as long as you can bring in the Excel file. So that's the Excel file we're going to need, okay? Remember, it's sitting outside. It was created outside, all right? We're gonna bring it in. So the way you would do that, like you can import anything inside of Webby, although a lot of people aren't familiar with it, is you first of all gotta figure out where do I wanna put it? In my case, I have an Excel subfolder here. I put that out there just to hold files. I could stick it in here if I wanted. Uh, in fact, for simplicity, what I wanna do is let's get rid of the one. I'm just gonna do what's called an organized delete, your typical add, copy, paste, delete feature that we have in, in all of Webby to get rid of it. Because I wanna have that particular subfolder hold my Excel file. Okay? Now, if I do put it anywhere under my documents, we gotta keep in mind a very important point. And this comes back frequently and haunts people. If I stick it in here and I want to share it with other people in my department, I got a problem. What I have to do is physically send it to them so they in turn individually can each put it out there in a folder on their particular PC so they can get access to it. Not necessarily the way you want to do it. That's where you might want to have a public folder. I showed you public folders briefly. Maybe you want to have an actual Excel special name or whatever for it. And everybody manages the Excel files from that location the advantage there is anybody that has access to that particular folder will get access to those Excel files. It provides you a way with locking them down. Maybe you don't want them changing the Excel file, but taking what's already there. Once again, you have to think about how am I using it? Who else is gonna be using it? Where should I put it, all right? If you send it out to 10 different individuals with the same identical Excel file, you can bet somebody's gonna change it and probably more than one person and it's gonna be different and then we've got a mismatch of data if we try to take reports from each other and compare. So you want to you need that responsibility or you need to take that responsibility and manage that as well. So I, what I'm gonna do is put it under my documents for simplicity's sake. I'm gonna go up to the new button up here, do your new local document. This is how you would put a folder and subfolder in and so on, or you could create a publication, but we'll do a new look, actual new local document. And when Webby comes in, we'll go up to the choose file option up here and we have to point to it. Well, remembered from when I did this in prior sessions when I was testing, that's the Excel file I want. And it brings it up and over in the right-hand corner in the bottom, we have to remember to do the add button. And if all goes well, the Excel file shows up and there it is. You'll notice I have another one called state filter file. I always have a second piece that if I have time, I bring in at the end of this, where I show you how you can bring an Excel file in that single column, in this case, just states, and I can use it as a dynamic filter inside my query, inside the report document itself. Where I have a query where I'm filtering on state, I can actually point to the Excel file. Another one of those great advantages of having an Excel file 
that functionality be able to you as well. So now I have an eFashion file. I'll give you a clue what it looks like, although we'll see it in a couple minutes. It has inside of it quarter, month, and projected revenue. I'm trying to get projected revenue in. Am I limited to one Excel file? No, you can have as many as you want. I noticed some of my people out here are, are from one of the banks that I've done a lot of training for over the years down in Cincinnati. And I had a gentleman down there a while back where all he did was report from a series of Excel files. Each sheet inside of an Excel file is read as an individual query and you can just keep adding and adding and adding. And literally it could be nothing but a mass of Excel files that you're bringing together and merging together to combine that that way. So it gives you a very nice control factor as well. All right, so we've got our Excel file sitting out there, it's ready to go. So let's go back into Webby, we'll hit the old home button up here, and let's build a new document and let's bring in the Excel file. So over on the right, click my little Webby icon, and up comes what I refer to as the infamous blue-gray screen nowhere. When it came up from earlier versions, I was amazed and shocked when, then, when this was the step you would come to when you're creating a new document. There's no start, there's no set of buttons per se to really guide you, and you have to know what to do here. So in our training class, you, we kind of work you heavily on it so you get the pattern down very well. We're going to hit the new button here to create a new one. And let me show you, I'm running 4.2 SP7 right now. So the last couple service pack levels, we picked up a few extras. You'll notice some things that I have available to bring into my report, into my document. I know data source would be empty. There are uses for that, some other advanced features we won't cover today. Universe is your classic. We're going to use that in a little while after we bring our Excel file in. Excel, of course, that's been around since 4.1, and we're talking about it now. And they formally allowed us to do text files now as well. And, of course, there's good old freehand SQL. The other options, if you happen to be using one of those, are available to you as well. Those of you that are admin people, you can eliminate these through the CMC. There's a couple places you go to, so they don't see it here, and they don't see it when you add a new query in the left-hand corner. These three here in the event that you're not, you don't have any of those particular products installed at all, so that helps you as well. So let's go to Excel. Now, what's interesting about this, we already created the Excel file. We already brought it in, but it doesn't have to be that way. What if I picked Excel and realized I never got around to creating the Excel file. Oops. Well, I could literally go back to the Documents tab right now if I wanted to, because remember, it creates a separate report tab each time I open up another document or create another one. So I can literally have four or five tabs, i.e. four or five different documents open at the same time and copying around. So I could go to the Documents tab. I could click on one of the subfolders or a public folder, and I could do the new import and bring it in at that point. But we don't need to do that. We already brought it in up front to make sure that we had the file available to us as well. So we're doing okay. It's going to come back and uh, open a document from server. Now there's public folder on the bottom. Isn't it interesting? They can show the word public folder here, but they can't show it up on the front end in the very beginning. Who knows? But uh, as many of you know, I have had an opportunity for the last three and a half years to work directly with uh, the Paris development staff, including Samuel and Gregory and I'm able to get a lot of inputs into them, and a lot of you are responsible for requesting through me enhancements, and these are the types of things that I look for. Can you expand the regular documents tab? We'll see what happens as well. So now it says, well, where is it? Where's the Excel file? I want you to notice something. I'm at the favorites level. It's like root level in, in the Microsoft world, and I got all this stuff out here. Not smart. You should keep the roots level minimal, create a series of subfolders to organize all of your reports and your Excel files, shared elements and things like that to come in. So I got to be careful where I go. If I go to the Excel file, I've got eFashion. If I go to Webby Basic Reporting one, I don't have one. I cleaned it out earlier, but Webby Reporting, nope as well. So I've just got just the Excel file only. Okay, we'll select that one. We don't want the state filter file. That'll be a later uh, thing if we have time for that one, but I always have that one ready to go. So I'm basically bringing it in. Now this is called the Customer Data Provider Window. If you're a long-term user like me, we used to call it the PDP, Personal Data Provider Window. But as my friends from Paris are always doing, they're renaming things, and it drives me crazy, but that's how it is. And remember, if this is an Excel spreadsheet with more than one sheet, here's your sheets. I only have one, but I could create a query reading in the first sheet, then go back to add another query, select the Excel file option, bring in the second, third, and fourth. So multiple sheets can easily be brought in as one query at a time. First row contains column names. Please clean it up. Make sure that the first row has titles and nothing but data underneath it all the way across. Makes it very, very easy. Um, so let's do an OK on it. And let's see what comes up. You're going to see what I call the pseudo query panel. 
It's not a true query panel. A true query panel is built around the concept of a universe, at least from my perspective. It would have a results objects window, a filter section for query filters, and it would have a data preview. But with Excel files, we don't have that filter capability. But I have made a number of requests to the developers asking in future releases, if I can bring in Excel, is there any way we could add a filter feature up here to be able to treat it like it was a regular query from a universe? We'll see what happens with it, okay? So it's got quarter, month, and projected revenue. We kept it simple. Obviously, quarter and month would be our structural pieces. Here's your classic data preview window, by the way. And over on the right side, I'm going to do a refresh to refresh it because I want to see a dump of the data. And if you're not familiar with data preview, it shows up in the query panel. It allows you up to 1,000 rows, 10 approximate number of, of data. And all it is is a raw dump of your data source. This is not a report. It's a dump of your data. Many people like to look at this so they can figure out which columns do they need to bring into the report. Maybe they discovered that there might have been four or five other measure columns, but they didn't need them all. They could come up here and eliminate them as well. So I've got quarters one through four, months one through 12, projected revenues for each and every one of them. Realistically, in a real life application, it would have been year, quarter, month. We did this to simplify things, to make the examples make it a little cleaner for you, just so that mentally you don't have to sort as much of it out. Let's run that query, but before we do that, we're gonna go down to the bottom here. And you'll notice in the lower left-hand corner, query one. By default, business objects names each query, starting with query one. If I were to add a second query, it would become query two and so on, all right? You can build a very complex report. Uh, I have a customer in here. In fact, some of you are attending today's webinar. I saw your names out there from the Pittsburgh area healthcare organization. There was a document that I was made aware of a lot, quite a long time ago that had a, close to 70 queries in it, 70 queries. Can you imagine looking at the bottom right now where I have one and envision in your own mind 69 more to look through? And it's my understanding they're not called query one through query 60 or 70, and you can rename as well. So we're gonna do a right click to rename, and we're gonna rename this one eFashion since that's what it is. It's also to your advantage because later on when we get to the report viewer window, the output side, and we're using all of the data that was brought in from this particular uh, data source, a query, uh, it have a nice meaningful name. Try always to rename your query tabs. Uh, it does not allow you to double click in the HTML version. You had to right click rename, but that's okay. It's only true of the query panel level for that as well. Also try to stay away from special characters. M many of you that have been through my training, you already know. I used to put dashes in all of my uh, uh, tabs on the bottom and found out that it doesn't like special characters and it can come back and haunt you later on. So you wanna be careful with that as well. So we're doing okay on that. So let's just rename it. Didn't have to do that. Now I'm ready to run the query. I go up to the right-hand corner, your classic run query. There's a close also that allows you to close it out without running it, much like we had in earlier versions of business, business objects. And if you notice, there's my report. You also notice we got a very interesting problem with that report. As I look at it, I've got quarters, months, and projected revenue, but I don't have all 12 months. And looking at it, you say, what is going on? We just previewed it in the pseudo query panel world, and we'll just call it the query panel world. And it showed all four quarters, all 12 months, they were all there. But what happened? Ah, look at the left side here. Look at my available objects tab. It's new document is the name of the document. It's got the um, quarter, month, projected revenue um, in here. But notice month, by definition, month is a measure. Now, you think about it, we didn't really assign any format types to these, did we? So what happens is whenever you bring in an Excel file, and from my experience, it goes all the way back to the beginning days of Excel files being brought in, Webby has to look at each column one at a time, or object technically. So it looked at the quarter column and said, is it a dimension or a measure? That's the formula it follows, dimension or measure. Then it moves to the month column, dimension or measure. Well, the quarter column was easy. It's got a Q in there. By definition, it can be nothing but a dimension, you can't make it a number. But the month column, Webby said, oh, wait a minute, it's all numbers, thank you, you just made my job easier, I'm gonna make it a measure. And that's what it did right here. But we know what happens when you have a measure combined with dimensions, it does an automatic roll up at the level of the dimensions that you brought in. And it, we didn't want it to do that. Now, before you start panicking going, wait a minute, so now I have to go back to Excel outside of the launch pad, and I gotta fix it in Excel and make it a, force it to be treated as a character string type column? No. Webby says, no, I'm, I'm your one-stop shopper. I'll take care of it for you. So we need to go back to the query panel in order to do that. So what do we do? Well, across the top, 
Here's our five ribbons, thanks to Mr. Bill Gates. Okay, we have our ribbons on the data access tab in the middle is the infamous edit button on the left. There's your refresh, new variable, and so on. And here's the other shortcut edit over on the left. We're going to edit that query. So we're gonna click on that to go back to the query. Okay, here it is. You notice the quarter and month. If I highlight the month column, I go to the left side. It allows me to take the object properties and requalify it, which I did right there. So I've got quarter, month, and projected revenue. Okay, and there's an edit settings if I want to look at some settings and stuff along the way that brings me back to that customer data provider window as well. So now when I rerun it, hopefully everything's gonna go right and I'm good to go. And all of a sudden, my data flows out properly, quarters one, two, three, four, months one through 12, and the projected revenue. And again, I could have had many, many columns. Obviously in real life, this one would have had year, quarter, month, uh, as opposed to just quarter and month. But again, for simplicity to make the Examples that we do, just a little easier for you to see, we just made it a little less complex is all. So now here's another question that comes in. Well, what do I do if I want to combine that with other queries? Is that Excel file treated differently? Is it treated like a query from a universe? How does it work? Well, we're going to do exactly that. And we're going to go back out, expand the query to bring in some data from a normal universe. Okay, bring the data together and let's see what we have to do. If you think about it, a query is a query, whether the query source is, a, is Excel or text or the query source is from a universe, doesn't matter. We can mix and match all we want as well. By the way, it's the same is true of the universes itself. Many of you that have been around a while know that we have a new type of universe, uh, UNX, which is the IDT based one, and we have the UNV, the old style uh, universe design tool. It doesn't matter there either. I can mix and match queries across multiple um, universe types and they all come together very nicely. So how would we go back? How would I go back if I wanted to add a second sheet from that same Excel file? Or how would I go back to, for universe? Well, up on the left is your edit button or over here. And I can't stress enough, I'm amazed how many people are using the product long-term don't get into the habit of using the self-help messages along the way. They're awesome, they're awesome. They recently added an enhancement, I think it was an SB6, so that if you're creating a local variable calculation for you power users, you now have a description box that pops up automatically when I move my mouse over this. We need that type of functionality to make it easier for us to navigate through the report viewer window in particular for that, but across all parts of the product as well. So let's go back to the query panel. And you notice in the upper corner is add query. We stand one at the bottom, but they don't have that. And here's all of your different sources, all right? From a universe, I can go back and add another Excel, a free and SQL or text. I get a lot of customers that like to turn that feature off. They don't like users uh, using freehand SQL to bring in data. There's an argument to be made both ways. Webby fully supports it, just beware of that. Uh, we're gonna do a universe this time. And our list of available universes based on the security table. I got all these, I'll pick e-fashion. Now, the moment I start this process, I have to be thinking big picture. I've got an Excel file. I know they've got two dimensions in a quarter and month and I've got one measure. So my second query from me, Fashion Universe, I'm going to need to match up somewhere along the way so I have something to link on, something to merge, okay? Something common. Commonality we do through the structural component in Webby, and that's the concept of a dimension. So we're going to need to go to time period, and as a minimum, we're going to need at least quarter and month, or quarter at least, but we'll do quarter and month, because that's going to be the common dimension that I'm going to want to link those together, those two queries when we finish it up, okay? You've got to have something common, at least one or more dimensions, or you have no way of linking them together. And that's true of any product you would take this data into. You're going to have the same issue. So there's my quarter and month, and maybe from the measures perspective, I grab sales revenue and quantity sold. And what did I say about renaming your query tabs? A great feature, let's go down to the bottom. Let's do a rename. And for that one, we'll call this one eFashion number one. Always a great idea because most users are, are querying more than one data source. I might point out I, uh, a little while back, I took a look at the online documentation the SAP puts out, and I just looked up the concept of multiple queries just to see what they recommended. And it was funny, they said typical reports, you don't want to have more than four, five, or six queries queries or data providers in a, in, a, in a document. And I laughed, I've got customers with 10, 12, 14, all the way up to some big numbers that I mentioned earlier as well. And it works fine. It's just, you have to manage it more effectively as well. So now that I've got my second query built, notice it's eFashion one. While I'm working on that, I could go back to the eFashion one here, which I really should have called Excel, 
In fact, let me right click and rename it. I'm going to rename that one to Excel for that one to get it the more correct name. I'm not thinking earlier about it. So I could I could go back and work on two at the same time. If I do that, I need to make sure that I refresh all the queries. So if you notice, the Run Query button is now plural. Classic multiple queries. It doesn't matter whether it's all Excel or universes or a mixture thereof. Do I need to run the Excel one? No, we already did. Do I need to run eFashion number one? Yes, let's do that. Or I could have run them all and refreshed all of them at the same time. Here's your classic insert new report wizard that comes up. We're going to do an OK on it. And lo and behold, there's my report tab on number one. If I go to query number two here, here's my eFashion universe with quarter, month, and so on. The moment you do that, look at the mess you've got on the left side. Look at the mishmash, as I like to call it. You've got dimensions in alphabetic order followed by measures. Not a great way to organize things, is it? Why don't we go down to the bottom and change the arrange by and make it an arrange by query? This should be automatic every time you come in to Webby. And to save someone asking the question on it later on, I've made numerous appeals to Samuel and Peter and the development staff to make this an automatic setting to automatically arrange by query because that's what you typically want to do. And they said, no, nope, the users can go in and change it. I pleaded that they do it in preferences up here, or there could be a preference setting to set it. So whenever you display the available objects, it does it by query, but no luck. So, so what we're trying to do is combine the results of these two queries together. All right. One of them happens to be eFashion uh, Universe. One happens to be the Excel file that we want to bring together as well. So let's go down and rather than use either one of those two reports, which I could, we'll just add a new one. Remember, when you add a report tab, you get an empty tab. You get no title. Nothing. And we got to make sure that we always pull from one source, the primary dimensions that represent the linking dimensions between your queries have to be from one source, cannot be mixed and matched. In other words, I don't want to take quarter from the first query and month from the second. It's because of how it internally joins those together. So I'm just going to take quarter and month here in projected revenue. We'll drag that all across, classic multi-select. I love being able to do that, quarter month of project revenue. And then sales revenue quantity sold, we'll do a multi-select there, drag those across, drop those into place. Whoop, I was off a little bit. Let's use the infamous unlimited undo button to get this the right way. And we'll go back and grab sales revenue and quantity sold again, drag those in. I'm running Chrome, so sometimes it's a little bit finicky about dragging things in and out and so on. So now if you take a close look at what we've got over here, it's kind of interesting. The quarter to month and projected revenue came from Excel. And by the way, as we look at it over here on the left side, you can't really tell that. There's nothing to really tell you that that's Excel and the other ones aren't. But my naming convention helped me out. And look at the order they're in as well. But you'll notice when I get over to quantity sold and sales revenue, I have an interesting problem. They're grand totals. And you know why, just by looking at it. Do you see a link between these two queries? Nope. So the quarter and month came from the first query, so that's the base set of dimensions that make up the report and they're going to be the ones that we merge with and then my revenue so somehow or other i need to link these two together okay and there's two or three different ways to do it i'll do the classic way up here if we go to data access okay and we went to the merge button up here it's going to come back and say what would you like to merge together one set at a time so in other words i'll do quarter using my control key i'll do quarter here and do an okay and it merges them together. Now my quantity sold and sales revenue are now rolled up a level. So they're only quarterly totals instead of grand totals. Once again, I can use the old merge button again, and this time for month. Okay. And month. And you could you could have done more than two. You might have added four or five queries and then choose to merge them all at one time, as you see right here. Then away we go and notice how it builds in an automatic map. This says you have merged dimensions with month and quarter. These are the two queries that make up the month. These are the two queries that make up the quarter. Awesome ability to do that. And again, these could have all been Excel files, 100% with no universes whatsoever. Okay? And it worked very nicely. So now we have an interesting situation. The Excel file needs to be updated. Okay? It needs to be updated. And then how do I bring it in when I do update it? So let me go outside of Webby. Let me go out to browse. I'm outside the launch pad. Let's take the original eFashion dot xls file here i'm actually going to edit it in excel directly and i'm just going to add another column over here and we'll call it actual just so you can see a column uh what did i do here actual and i'm just going to put a number in each column just to fill it 
zero, one, one, and one, two. So I've updated the Excel file. When you update an Excel file, your brain needs to kick into overdrive and say, what type of change am I making? Because it makes a difference how you update. I'm gonna give you a hard, fast rule to keep you out of trouble, but I'm making a structural change. If I was just doing an update to the data, adding more rows of you know more rows of data, updating some of the numbers that are there already, but making no physical change at all, it's a breeze. We're going to talk about both here in a minute. So I updated it by physically adding another column. It doesn't matter where it was, it's still a problem. We'll save the changes. So now I have an interesting problem that's not easy to decipher. It's easy to lose sight of. The Excel file that I'm using for this document, I know where it's coming from, okay? Because if I go back to the query panel. Let me go back to the query panel and I look at the Excel tab here. I can see uh, where it's reading it from and whatever, you know, for the, it's reading it internally there. And it basically it's in the, it's pointing it out of the wrong place. At least that's what it looks like in theory. It's not really pointing in the wrong place. Uh, we just have not re-imported the file. But I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute. How can we do that? How can we re-import the Excel file um, within the document itself. Earlier we took what was there and we imported it new. So what I need to do is re-import that new one, but you don't do it by re-importing. Here's what you do. We're gonna put it back in the Excel file and here it is, eFashion. And you highlight the specific one that, you, that you're using. And this is why you have to be careful about duplicates. And you use the infamous organize replace button. Where they dream this up, I will never, never know. I think there's many other ways they could have done this structurally to make it easier for you and me to do a replace file, okay? So it says, where are, we, where are we going? Let's choose it. It's gonna point back to that one by default, but you and I know I just updated that file and it's different, okay? So that's the one we're gonna bring in. And now down on the bottom, notice it says replace. I've seen people go this far and close the X button in the upper right-hand corner here and flush out what they just did. Gotta be careful to do a replace. I hit the replace button. It tells you it's going to about to overlap it. What it's going to do is re-import it in to your to the folder we, under documents where we just were that we highlight it, replace it with a new version of it. And now this e-fashion is updated. But the problem is our report that we're currently working on doesn't reflect the change. And here's where you need to be extremely careful. Okay, You can't just re-import and dump it over the top of that one or delete it. You'll blow a hole in it. So how do I fix this problem? Okay, how do I re-update this without destroying it? Well, if you go back to the, if you hit the refresh all button, you would have been okay as long as there were changes to the data itself, but no structural changes at all. Otherwise, you have to go through the longer process I'm about to show you. Who's gonna remember that? So what I do is a hard, fast rule. Whenever I brought in an Excel file and then updated it, I do the same thing. I go back to the query panel by editing it. I go to the Excel file and you hit the edit settings button right here. The edit settings button comes up, okay, with this, and I hit the OK button at that point. And notice all of a sudden it picked up the change just by doing an edit setting and doing an OK. And if I had done the opposite and removed a column, it would have disappeared. And then when I reran it, it would have disappeared off the report. But that's the column I had just added into the Excel file. Then I did an organized replace to bring it in, and now everything's good. Now I can run it. And it will update. It doesn't matter whether it's a structural change or not. I took care of the problem. Now, a lot of people get this puzzled look on their face and say, well, wait a minute here. How come it doesn't have actual in it? Well, we added that in new. We have to just drag that one back in, put it in next to our projected revenue, get it to slide in where I want it to go look for the blue chip for that one. So there's projected revenue and actual. These are all four columns came from the first query. The second two came from the second query that are here but they're all merged together properly along the way and you're good to go for those as well. A couple other things that can happen a lot with Excel files because it, when you're bringing Excel, it might be a smaller set of data. I know in the universe itself, we had all four quarters and all the months that were there. What if for some reason the Excel file only had a quarter one and two in it, okay? So when I brought the quarter and month in here, notice quarter and month, notice the qualifier tells me it came from the Excel query, okay? versus if I put the quarter and month in from the second query, they would be in here. So if I, if I make the base quarter and base month come from query number one Excel, if there's only a quarter one and two in existence in the data, I'm gonna only see quarter one and true, quarters one and two. Treats it like an outer join from that perspective, okay? There'll be blanks or, or null values for, the, for these other columns here, and the other ones would have values for just quarter one and two. If I replace it with the e-fashion quarter and month, 
and it only had a quarter three and four in it, this is only going to have a quarter three and four in it as well, going across and no quarter one or two. If you remember those that might have been through multiple data provider examples in the past that I've done, but I'm talking, you know, with Excel here now, we brought in Excel as part of the mix. If you bring in the merge dimension quarter, i.e. the parent, drop that into place. You got to make sure if you do it for one, you do it for all. Whoop, I did it in the wrong place. Chrome's always finicky about dragging. You'll notice that. So, so what I want to take the merge dimension quarter, drop that right over the top in the middle of the cell right there. And I want the merge dimension month, i.e. the parent there. We'll drop that one into place uh, in the right in the middle there. So now what that gives me is almost like a union all. You get all the quarters and months from all the subsequent queries that make up the ones here that you've merged together. So it works very, very nice in allowing you to do that as well. Okay. So the Excel file functionality, uh, it really, it's really nice how this works. Notice how when I went back to documents, if I'm updating an Excel file, you have to do a right click, organize, replace in order to update it. But you have to remember to go back to the query panel and you hit the edit button down in the query section, as I showed you here. That's the tricky part. If all I did was change the Excel file is adding more rows of data, updating specific values, not a single structural changes, I could have done a refresh at this point and been done. But we added an extra column that messes it up. So by going back to the query panel, Excel, and again, hit the edit settings. And people always wanna do more. Well, there's gotta be more I need to do here, something in here for me to do. No, just by doing that, it's rereading the path, rereading it, and it picks up the change it puts it in, or if it's something you removed, it takes it out. And then when you, you have to remember to rerun the query because you've made a change to that query. All right, I haven't changed any more here, but that's what you'd have to do in that particular case as well. And again, it could have been all Excel files rather than just the one. Let me show you one other little thing here. I did this on purpose. I always like to sneak this little piece in because whether it's Excel or universes or both, Let's add one last query in for demo's sake here. This will be kind of cool. And we're gonna pick uh, add query again from a universe. And we're gonna pick key fashion again. I wanna show one other thing that comes into play because some of you may run into this and with just Excel files only. And margin and discount will bring in. Another query, I can rename that one eFashion number two. Rename eFashion number two. Okay, and we're ready to roll on that one. I can go up to the run query section. Do I need to rerun the first query? Nope, second query, nope, just the fashion two one that we just did. We'll select insert into a new report tab just to be safe. And we'll let her rip. You don't really have to do that. And frankly, I can eliminate all the report tabs except the one report tab that has it combined, which in me is report number three. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to bring in additionally margin and discount. So let's take the report, which is on report tab three. There's my quarter and month, projected and actual came from Excel. Quantity sold sales rate came from the universe. Okay. And we'll take margin and discount, drag those in. There are many ways I could have done it, but I did it this way. Well, if I was just a little too close to the edge, you'll notice. Chrome can be a little more finicky about dragging and dropping, but Chrome in general does a, overall does a better job. But just for this piece of it, sometimes you'll see it be a little bit finic finicky. Uh, let's get it right on the edge, right about there. Nope, still got it in the wrong place. So when in doubt, let me show you a neat little shortcut, a feature that I really like that's available. It's called the sign data. It was geared around charting, but lends itself well. It's going to show me what's in here. I can hit the plus button at the bottom of my sales revenue, and where I've got sales revenue quantity sold, and I can pick, um, we'll put the margin in there next. Then we'll hit the plus button here, and we'll use that, and we'll put the discount in there. And there's other things that can be done in here as well. Uh, but they're just some of the features that are available. And I got it in that way and it added it to the report as you see. So all I did was add two more columns, but it's another query, okay? Because I treated it like another query, it did not automatically merge it. That used to be a feature in three, it was an auto merge. And I always taught you to turn it off. So what do I need to do? I'm just missing my merging, aren't I? I just gotta do an additional merge to bring the, um, uh, the last query into the results. So I need to link e fashion number two in with the other two down here. So what do we need to do on that one? We'll go up to the merge button. And again, this could be all Excel only is while I'm doing it. So I need to take the quarter from query one and two and three and the okay button still grayed out. You're saying, wait a minute, you did this a couple of minutes ago and it worked great. Yeah, it worked great the first time there was a brand new merge, but now there's already a merge in place. I'm trying to add what's there. 
this is the tricky part. Well, I like to show it in anything, whether it's Excel or universes in general or both. If I go down to the merge dimension quarter here and select the quarter in eFashion number two and do a right click, there's a little button called Add to Merge. A little awkward. It'll only show that to you if you're correct configuration, if you haven't done it already. Then I need to take the merge dimension month, i.e. the parent, and the month from eFashion two. You can always ignore the italics. It looks like it's an error or it's grayed out, but it's not. Not when you're doing Add to Merges. And it adds those into the mix, and that's how you would do it there. Of course, you could have just unmerged everything and had them all, all four, three queries unmerged and gone up here and done it there and done three at once. But nevertheless, there you go. See what happens. So I wanted to try to get within that 40, 45 minute window the uh, show you how that works with the Excel files. It's a very powerful way of getting data in for stuff that doesn't exist. It could have been brought in for a filter file if you wanted. It could have been uh, brought in as a bridge table. Maybe you want to bridge it from two different queries from two different sides. You could have a table in the middle with two columns and map to that. But it really opens up Pandora's box in terms of giving you all kinds of ways of getting supplemental data in to your reporting. Okay? And any of those, of course, even the Excel file can be used for charting and everything else. Once it's an available object, it's fully functional to me. and I can use it, and I can use it in the variable calculations, reference cells, things like that as well. So let me flip back out here. I wanted to make sure I allowed some extra time for, um, close that out. So I get some time for question and answer now. We had a lot of some questions more recently, so I want to make sure I give us some time uh, for everybody. So uh, let's do this. The attendees, let's see where we're at. Uh, let me unmute everybody. So I've uh, unmute everybody. So what I'll do is let's do question and answer now. We'll take some time and answer any questions that we can. Anybody? I know there's got to be something uh, out there. Some burning question somebody has. <laughs> sure. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Great. Um, I'm going to be vague, which is why I waited for anybody else to have a question. I was trying to merge two dimensions. I was trying to merge two variables um, together. And I think what it was happening is it was forcing it to be a measure when I wanted it to be a dimension. Okay. Putting variables. Do you know why that would force it to be that way? It depends what it defaulted to when you created the variable. You're talking a local variable? Yeah. So with local variables, you have the ability when you create the local variable to pick dimension or yeah. measure, dimension or measure. So you've got to make sure in the top half of the, when you're creating the variable in the top half of the variable editor window, that you make sure you pick dimension for that one. There's only one spot, right? Because I was picking dimension and it was forcing it to a measure. It shouldn't convert it over in that particular case, unless you okay. had a mismatch in the other dimensions that you were merging on, but it should have should have automatically uh, should allow you to do that. If you're having so if a problem, there was a mismatch, you might, that would do it? Pardon me? If there was a mismatch, that might do it? That could cause it, yeah, where you get multi-values, or it could be there's a mismatch on the dimensions. You have one primary one in, in one of your queries, there's a second one in the, in the other query, but you're only merging on the first. It'll create multi-value type errors or other situations like that. So you have to be careful. I will give you one little bit of advice, to, to, a lot similar to that along those lines. It kind of made me think about it. Um, a lot of times, if, what if you have a file with, um, oh, somebody out there I can hear. So, what if you have a file that's got an, uh, that's got a mismatch or two, two two different queries, two different universes, two different Excel files? What if in one Excel file your months are one through twelve, and the other one they're Jan through December? You can create a local variable on one of those two columns and convert you convert it with an if then else and then link together uh, on the local variable. That is supported even if it's an Excel file where you had to re redefine, although you could do it in Excel itself. But there is a way you can create a local variable now. You can merge on it as well. So I talked briefly on that in the last presentation I did on manager merging. So other questions anybody has? I'd like to give I people. Have, I have a question regarding the types of uh, of objects that you have an SAP BO in the sense of um, in previous versions, you could only do merge merges on dimensions. But what if in the universe you have something that is the same, but it's a detail in a different universe? We used it's to do like a variable, like a, yeah. you know, like a, and then you could actually merge them once they were both dimensions. Is that still true in this version? Yeah, what you, it, you've got it reversed. What would happen is if you had one dimension in, in the first query and two in the other side, 
So you were mm -hmm. off, you were mismatched, you would take the second dimension and make it a detail. That would allow you to slip through it. That's what I used to do a lot of in the desktop in particular. That's the example you're referring to. And I still run into that once in a while, that same situation. It's What it okay. comes down to is when you're bringing in multiple queries, I know we're primarily Excel, but if you're bringing in multiple queries with multiple dimensions, you've got to try to match them up based on what makes them unique, you know, to make sure they can link properly. Yeah, Excel. but the benefit of doing it in Excel is you can always make it whatever you want, either a dimension right. or a or a detail, but you can't do that in universes. That's why you have no. to cheat right. and well, create you, that variable, right? Right. Yes, exactly. We get around it by using variables. What's important though is in 4.2, the, the concept that I can now create a local variable that I can merge on. So if I make that local variable a measure and it's strictly generated within that particular document, I can merge on it now, which you could never do before. It didn't happen that way. Mm, okay. Always the way I tell people, if you're trying to get data converted, use an Excel multi-column table as one of your data sources and merge the other queries against the left or right side of it. And it's a perfect way to get around it. Works fantastic. We have some examples we do in our advanced training class where we show you the if then else example and how to do that, where you take a local variable that you've created so you can get around the mismatch. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Anybody else? Any other questions? Sometimes I'll get a ton. Uh, yeah, I, I have a question. Go ahead. You might dial oh. down a little bit on the, on the volume. Yep. So my question is, I noticed on the, in your example you had month and month and quarter and quarter were named exactly the same. The naming of the variables, does that matter? No. When you're linking as long as they're the same nope. data? They've got to be the same format, for, same format type. So if it's got it, you know, if it's a dimension, dimension, or measure, or measure, yeah, yeah. Uh, they got to have the same format type. Yep. Okay, cool. Yep. Diff yeah, just any any old name, doesn't matter. We tend to try to name things similarly, so it makes it a little bit clearer, but it really doesn't matter. Thank you. Hopefully, you've all got a, some really good insight. Model. Yep. I'm curious about the history. I'm curious about the district filter that you said you might show if you had time. I mean, I'm say filter. I'm sorry, you're breaking all up. I can't, I can hardly decipher. I don't know if you can adjust your volume or something. It's not coming through clear. Uh, you, said, you said you might show a state filter from Excel. Yeah, we, if we have time on that one. I, I had it set up and ready to go. I just had to gen it up. But I always I wanted to give question and answer period because we're finding that the question and answer period is running longer, so to give people more time. Other people? Hey there. Mind if I ask a quick question with regard right. to publications? Is there a way to incorporate Excel so I can build, let's just say, a dynamic list? So on Mondays it sends to person one, and then on Tuesdays it's a person two with the single Excel file? I believe so, I have not done that. I would have to, to take a look at it on that one and to, to investigate it. And I could always do that and follow up with you if you drop me an email, get back to you later on. Thank you so much. Is, is there a way to um, force your Excel document and what's in the web to say you can infer um, it has leading zeros, but the web source doesn't have the leading zeros is there a way to make it so they are you keep you keep breaking this you broke up at the end so i didn't i, I couldn't catch it all <sighs> i'm um, sorry all right can the connections <laughs> do it let's see try again um yeah. oh, oh. Can you force leading zeros to match? You, you know what I'll need you to do? Probably send me an email, post this. It's a bit, it's okay. just, it's not real clear. I, and I don't want to short you on that. So, well, we'll get, you can drop me an email, post, and then I'll make sure I do some follow-up and get your question answered on that. I'll do my best for that. So I have a question. I'm concerned about not being able to put a query filter with the Excel because 
I was just thinking of something I just did where we use something from an Oracle form that spit into an Excel that had a bunch of coding behind it that used a bunch of Oracle get packages and everything. So we got this nice Excel file, but it was over 9,600 rows. Yeah. Well, not everybody's going to want to see every row. They only want to see what's pertinent to their organization. Right. So, so there's no way to, and no. there's no prompts well, the, or nothing. No way to. You brought it in. If you could bring it in, the data in as a query, bring it in. Didn't get into the Webby from the report viewer perspective. If there was an applied hierarchy, you could build um, cascading uh, cascading input controls. You could layer it that way. It's a relatively new feature came out for two SP five or six, where I can link. Let's say you have a, a year. Let's say you have state, city, and store. I can bring in the data at the state, city, and store level, and then I can have uh, the cascading feature turned on. And what it will do is when the when the user picks the first one, it will only show them sh the children values for that specific one they picked up. And you know that it would would uh, potentially be a way that you could do it. Maybe that data comes in from an Excel file rather than from Universe. Doesn't matter, but it's called the cas cascading input controls. Uh, if I do a four three for the next round, I actually demo that how I can just link those three together, and there's an automatic applied hierarchy. So when you start at the parent level, you only see the children for the parent value or values that you picked. So, and again, that could have been an Excel data provider that came in and brought in the values. So, a lot of good stuff. 4.2 all the way through SP7. SP8 is strictly a, it was strictly patches where they uh, uh, they called it the bug release. Believe it or not, that's what SAP called it. But uh, through, all the way through SP7, um, a lot of major enhancements scattered all through there. A lot of new features, uh, intra-document linking to jump around within a document, and you always had element linking and stuff like that. There's a lot of advanced dashboarding functionality that you have that people don't realize the full power of. It's available. It's really Again, the 4.2 service pack levels all have just an amazing number of uh, new features. So obviously today wouldn't work with me covering Excel, but um, maybe it might be a good next topic. In fact, for feedback, if you give me any feedback at all from today, which I would appreciate, if you'd like to see the new summary new features 4.2 SP3 for the next webinar, let me know. We, we go to you for ideas. This Excel was the one everybody asked for, the biggest percentage, so we did that. But for the next one, if you let me know, uh, maybe we could do that and you get an opportunity to see. Too many times now I've seen people all around the country, US, Canada, Mexico in particular, where I do bulk of my uh, work, people are getting into the new version and they don't do any training or updating of any type. And there are so many new features that are out there, 80 to 100 easily across service packs starting with three all the way through you know seven or eight. And you're not utilizing features you know uh, that you should be taking advantage of that give you so much functionality. Uh, they've really added some great bells and whistles, you know, uh, really made it uh, even more powerful so we can do a lot of more dashboarding like functionality better than we've ever been able to do. I love those new chart types, the funnel charts and uh, speedometers and those type that we have as well. Again, we'll be offering training coming up um, uh, towards the end of June. Uh, you know, Steve had the slide up for you for the Accelerate. Check it all out. We just did some training uh, recently, very successful. Some of you that are I think in my audience today were there. Uh, it was a lot of fun for me. It was really, really good advanced level training, and you get all the cover all the new stuff, all the advanced level. And I can promise you, the big complaint I get from all my training classes is we make you work doing the hands-on. It's heavy duty hands-on workshop sessions throughout, so you get a lot of good practice. So again, you can always follow up through Accelerate to reach me if you have any questions, or whatever. I was able to respond back the last time around. Well, if anybody was in that group, uh, they want to do ranking on subtotals, worked up a couple quick examples for it. If you were in that category, people dropped me a note. That question came up in a uh, very neat little way to do that. So anybody else out there? I did at least get some questions for it. We're running close to two. I like to keep it right on schedule for that. But always Hello keep, there. You can always email me as well. So Hello there. Hello. Yeah, hi. Um, how do I know which service pack do I have? Go up to the About button on the, on the launch pad on the upper right-hand side, down on the About button, and there's a place you can click it on it, and it'll tell you what release. Okay, thank you. Yeah, make sure you know what service pack level you're at. That makes a huge difference, huge difference. Very significant when you go like in the four, five, six service pack levels, 
and I apologize. I used to know all the way up through like five. I was getting better on six, and when they threw seven out there, I lost it. I can't keep track anymore. I can tell you approximately where, but yeah, make sure you know what service pack level you're at because you never know. That, that can dictate whether a particular feature is available or not or working or not. Thank you. So if you get a chance, you can fill out an eval or if you can give me some feedback or give me an idea what future topic you'd like to see. 4.2 SP, the 4.2 released summary new features seems to be the next high item list that people were looking for. So let me know. We try to help accommodate you. You want to get a lot of this, come to our training classes. You get those 30, 35 best practice guides in a huge collection of uh, materials and stuff. And it makes your jobs a whole lot easier when you have a great set of reference documents. All the best practice guides, by the way, come in electronic form. So you have those to carry around with you in addition to your regular course books. So don't forget, drop me an email if you need to. I'd be happy to do follow up with any of you. Uh, usually I get a lot of interesting uh, ideas from you, the things that you'd like to see in the product. And it makes it very nice. So, all right, with that, we'll close out then. Thank you so very, very much, all of you. Appreciate you uh, coming out. And hopefully we'll see you soon at the next webinar, the training at the end of June. Uh, take advantage of it as well. It's virtual. You can do it from your home if you want. It works out well. If you take the training, try to have two screens. It makes it an even better experience uh, having it two screens to work on. So, all right, we'll bid you adieu then. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. And hopefully we'll see you soon. Thank you. 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 Thank you.